eyebrow. Ready? We're live. Hi, welcome. Welcome, good morning. I have actually made a few some progress well, between streams, believe it or not. And uh, hi, Bruno, you make this kind of difficult. Oh, it's okay. We're here. Welcome. Welcome, Dando's Junk and Big Bob's Props. Good afternoon. <sighs> I'm here. Yes, we're here. Just in the middle of putting on my sweater, but I got distracted by your Bruno. Oh, well. Hey, Bruno, how are you doing? Okay. Let me show you all where I've been and what I'm working on, okay? I got some hand sewing done. Let me see. Okay. This thing doesn't lay flat very nicely. There's definitely a curve built into it. So, but it's all sewn up with the exception of the collar. All the hand stitching is done. It's beautiful. It's ready to go. Um, this one I started the hand stitching on, and I have up here all sewn, and I have the back of the armpits, but I stopped because in giving myself more than enough seam allowance, it changed the shape of my armhole ever so slightly, so I have to trim off all this excess because the armholes here and I only gave myself a half an inch seam allowance. How can I explain this? Because I don't think I'm doing a very good job. This armhole that I originally drafted is the right shape, but because I added all the seam allowance and then when I cut it out, I also cut it out with a loose amount of, like with more seam allowance, so I had more than I needed. It changed the circumference of the circle. And so if you start stitching at this end, by the time you get over here, you have to trim away some excess. So I figured instead of, you know, struggling it with it on my own, I'd struggle with it live because, you know, why, why not do that? Torture myself in that way. Oh, and look, I learned my lesson. I have a lid on my cup because I honestly know better, but whatever. I try. Hmm. 45th Clown is here. Welcome. Hello. Hope you are all well. Yes. Hope you all are well. Um, yeah. And then also yesterday I spray glued on top of my glass table, which was a mistake because, you know, I'm live and just trying to get it all done. But what I really like about glass table is self clean. All the sticky stuff is gone. Um, I can spray glue, I can paint. I have spilt entire bottles of nail polish on um, this table and chemicals are great. You know, just uh, Windex took the spray glue off, um, nail polish remover, not gonna damage my table. I would destroy a wooden table. I really would. I would probably destroy lots of tables, but this table seems to be um, knee proof. So, one of the little reasons that I do like a glass tabletop. Um, yeah. Yes, Dan does junk it. These glass is a rather easy surface to clean compared to others. And that is the main point of why I really like it is that I have painted. I've used my glass table as my palette where I'll just put the paints directly on my table, blend my colors and paint from there because I know it'll come off really easily. I've done it a lot. This poor table, <laughs> Oy, the paint spots I've left on it, but um, no paint today. No paint today. We are just going to be sewing, but there will be some spray gluing today and I can't I have cardboard ready to go because I can throw this away without having to clean it. And I don't feel guilty because it's recycled. I saved it from the garbage as it is. <coughs> I always try to reduce, reuse, and recycle. My second grade teacher really drill, drilled that into our heads. And Miss Yamaka, 
I am still doing it, you know, trying to at least. Uh, yes, okay. So which part of this should I start with? That's a real big question here. No, I'm going to start with the collars. Because even though this armhole is, needs to be stitched and it's a little off, here I'll show you guys a little bit better. See, armhole lines up perfectly because it's not affecting the drape. But if I continue sewing here, it's going to start bunching and getting all messed up. So I have to trim it a little bit. But it is draping the right way, which is such a good feeling that things like in my head and then they come out into real life. And I think this is going to be perfect. Um, so I can still attach the collar because the whole collar part is um, fully hand stitched now. Um, and so is the pink one. The pink one's ready for the collar too. So if I get the collars both started and um, I think we'll be pretty solid in making progress today. Um, here, let me show you what I messed up on. Not messed up. Learning. I learned on. So this is the collar with the buff from lining, which isn't bad, you know? Like, honestly, had this been not velvet and buff from, this would be nice and crisp, and I could really iron it out and make a nice, good, um, clean, not floofy looking edge, but because I can only steam the velvet and I really want to press the buff from underneath, and I can't, not with it attached to the velvet, and I don't have one of those fancy needle boards. What's a fancy needle board? It looks like a medieval torture device. It's a board usually about this big, a little longer than the iron, you know, this, about this leg, about this wide, and it has pins all sticking up on it so that you can put your velvet down there and press it so it doesn't smash the hairs. But I feel like this is going to be a sharper way to do it with, I guess, use the um, card interfacing. It's giving a really sharp, clean cartoon angle, which is what I'm really going for. So that is why we are not continuing with the buckram, even though I wanted to make it work because it felt like the more legit way to do things, but in all reality, when you look into things, you often do find cardboard <laughs> as you're into mining, especially with purses and accessories and things that aren't overly washed. But yeah, Dan Disjunct says, I usually toast my cutting mats by not putting any kind of protection over it. Gets all gunked up with paint and glue. Yes. Yes, plastic gets gummed up with paint glue and you can't really get it off. So those cutting boards just get annihilated from craft supplies. And I tend to try and keep those really clean because I like to use those um, recovery boards and you cut on those surfaces and um, a dirty surface isn't the best. I do have one that's my junk one that I kind of move around with me, but yeah, I like a stupid glass table. So I'm not going to rip this apart. It's just being abandoned and left to the side for now. Um, I recut out my fabric. I'm going to have to trim these down, but I figured just in case I slightly cut off, I'd rather have um, wiggle room than no wiggle room. Phew, I can't see that, but oh my gosh, it just a, a little fibers when I pop this down. <sighs> and here's the card I have for the enter lining that I am going to put this down on. I wonder if I am going to even spray glue. I may just use contact. No, I like spray gluing the fabric and I'll contact some at the um, cardboard. Yeah, 
I like using spray glue and contact cement together because I don't want to use contact cement necessarily on my fabric because you might get globs of it and it's not it's not so even where spray glue it's just going to um, less is more yeah so that's the plan how's my headroom when I stand up not the worst okay we good I'm gonna be out of the way because I don't want to get sprayed yet, but I'm being set up. <sighs> Pin still in it. And I'm going to need a protective cover for my equipment. Ta-da! My one marked one. I'm not going to start with my, I'll leave that one till last so I can use those markings. Okay. Let's start with one and then we'll do two. Spray glue's there. And contact cement. It, they're both in my garden bag. Yay. I think I'm going to start with the contact cement because it's not as time sensitive because the spray glue isn't as time sensitive as the contact cement. I say that because this has to dry and get slightly tacky. This stays tacky for pretty for a while. It's like a restickable sticker. Like, so this one has more time issues than this one. So I'll start with the contact cement. Um, Dan this junk, yay, spray glue is more fabric friendly. Yes, it is. And before you did clown, I wrapped my last cutting mat with a small, oh, I warped my last cutting mat with a small blowtorch. Good excuse to get another. Yeah, heat will destroy a cutting mat and a surface. You either have to have a dedicated, I'm just going to destroy this surface, or I have my glass tables. For now. For now. It's symmetrical. There's not a right side and a wrong side. I just have to remind myself that because it's not always symmetrical, even though they are, they look like they could be. Yeah. And this isn't contact cement, it's rubber cement. I know people always correct me when I say rubber cement because it's like, no, that's contact cement. This one is rubber cement. So. What's the difference? I don't know. They both kind of work about the same. Like I don't have complaints on either way. Contact cements on the cheaper side comparatively. But yeah.
this bump is annoying. So the cardboard I like to use is specifically the paper towel dividers at Costco. Or, you know, Sam Clothes Costco, they let you take all the leftover boxes. They don't care. Um, in fact, they people see me start to grab those and they start helping me and go, oh, I have a stack over here for you if you want them, which is always nice. Um, if you go between the toilet paper ones, they have the creases. I don't know. It's annoying. It's the same weight, but there's definitely a crease in the middle, which is not as fun. Rubber cement isn't as crazy smelling as contact cement. In my opinion. Hmm. Um, <laughs> Dan is junk. I, I like when people give me funny looks when I grab the cardboard. I get those too. I get those too, but I take it as a learning experience. There was a lady giving out um, air freshener samples, like, I think it was like Glade air freshener samples or something like that. And she's like, watching me trying not to like pay attention. But then when the guy started helping me, she's like, what do you need that? Can I just ask you what are you using that for? And I'm like, well, this is a great crafting item, <laughs> cardboard. It is a great weight. And the guy was like, yeah, people come and take this stuff all the time. They use it for, um, linings for painting for crafting in general so i'm not the only one <laughs> definitely but yeah i do get some of those weird looks grabbing contacts all right let me hurry up and spray this okay i'm not gonna get an idea of my fabric Cardboard. I want to really get the edges because I'm going to be folding the edges over to the other side. Now, how should I do this? I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's repositionable. Well, at least the spray glue is. Ah! This is wider than my wingspan almost. Oh, where's my center? Right there. too much. Maybe it would be better to do it the other way. Yeah, maybe. Just a little bit right. Stupid bump. All right. So I can smoosh it out nicely. Smoosh and smoosh and smoosh. Okay. Wrinkles.
contact cement on its own, you can't necessarily pull it up and restick it, but this um, spray glue, this particular spray glue is repositionable. That is why I really like it. Oh, jeez, I feel like I'm off off. There we go. Nice and smooth. Okay. Oh, nice and smooth. Yay. Okay. Go on this side. And I will. Stick down the edges. I can take this for a second so I can see a little bit better. Mm. Big box props. My cutting mat got worked with the sun in the shed. Oh, I hate the sun. I love the sunshine. I absolutely love the sunshine. But my favorite rulers, I have lost so many of these to the sun. This one is broken in half, but it's a to love it um when they get left in the car when i was going to college they would get all warped and then they're useless as a ruler so yes that sunshine mm -hmm. oh <laughs> Okay, um, contact cement. Nice, Lucy, how are you doing? Shadow started staring at me. Realized I know that shadow. Okay, I lied. Now I'm starting to smell the contact cement. I didn't think I smelled it or smelled it earlier, but now I'm like, whew. I'll do half and then the other half. These ones, I don't mind if they get glue on. Dando's Joe, I don't use rubber cement. Do you have to let it set before sticking it or do you just stick it right away? Just like contact cement, rubber cement is the, I feel like it's the original version of contact cement and contact cement is the synthetic version of rubber cement. But yeah, you, you put it on both surfaces, let it get tacky and dry, and then you stick them together. Um, instead of doing both surfaces, I just attached it to a spray glue, which also works. Same with um, contact cement. Oh, this is not going to work for that. Yeah, that will work. Hi, Spooky. Spooky has just found my scrap bin.
So this is going to be my underside and this is going to be my right side and it's going to look nice and crunchy. I don't want that much of overlap. I may have let my contact cement over dry, but I mean rubber cement. Got out of the habit of saying contacts of rubber cement now. Do the other side. See how nice and crisp that looks? That is so much more what I was looking for. <laughs> Let me finish it and then I'll compare it to the other one of what I was trying to do. Spooky, you're in a scrap bin. I'm just going to throw fabric at you. That's just the rules. I don't think I'm going to be too. So both the pink and the blue bodice have um, yellow contrasting details on them. The pink shirt has a blue tie and the blue shirt has a pink tie. So I haven't even started or attempted to start making those ties, but I wanted to get collars on first so that I could measure and then have an idea of what shape to do the tie because I may just do a clip on tie but I don't know I might actually do one that goes around the neck we'll see what ends up looking better and working out better Yeah, and I'm really not worried about getting glue on this table other than I don't want to get glue on my fabric itself. So, but I'm also not going crazy. Let's give that a second. So, okay.
So when I first started using rubber cement, I know it was rubber in, in college and then it needs to dry and then contact cement. Um, I didn't know that you had to let the both sides get dry before sticking them together or tacky before you did that. I just thought that you, it was just glue when I used it, like it was a regular glue and just kind of smooshed it and smooshed it. It wasn't until I took um, my portfolio class that we had to put together our portfolios and, I, and my teacher actually was like, walked us through how to mount um, art into things in general. And he showed us how to use the contacts in my correctly. And I was like, oh, ooh, I've been doing that wrong for a while. <laughs> but. Okay, this side I sliced it and it's overlapping where the slices are. This side I didn't. And it's just, it has little bumps where I probably should have put slices. There you go, Spooky. There's some more confetti. Okay. another one. Let me see. This is my second piece. I don't want the seam allowance on this piece. I have to trim off the seam allowance because I just want to lay this as my under piece and cover up my edges. And this is definitely way bigger than my piece I originally wanted. And I don't want to glue it and then trim it because it might not be that cute. Actually, just spray glue this and trim it down. It's not the end of the world. I think that might work the easiest. But before I do that, I think I'm going to tr trace it so I have an idea of where this is supposed to lay when I'm gluing, spraying, and lining everything up. Yeah, see all that wiggle room? I need it. <laughs> Yeah, I need it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Nice. Everybody check out Big Bob's Props YouTube channel um, and Dan Does Junk. Dan is going to go live stream tomorrow evening, possibly. I just said something, so now you're more accountable. Mwahahaha. Yeah. Oh, nice. <sighs> Way to go sewing videos, big bobs, pops. Those things are definitely fun. And at Cosplay Repair, so many people have swords, so many different types of swords out of various materials. And the hardest part is keeping them in good enough shape for whacking. Because that is what destroys Destroy swords. Okay. I am going to move this out of the way.
Well, Bruno's awake now. Him and Toby were upstairs asleep when I started. Spooky's a twilight cat. He's up really, really early and really, really late at night and sleeps the rest of the time. <laughs> Those scraps they threw at Spooky are stuck to him like he's a felt board. <laughs> ah, the entertainment. Dan Dan's jokes. Congratulations, Felicia. I just noticed you hit 600. I know. It's a nice round number. I feel like I was like teetering on almost like for all year, which I don't mind. I like that this is a tight knit community and that you guys show up and that you guys are really kind and that you guys are nice and supportive and understand the weird stuff that I do. So I genuinely excited that I have viewers and good viewers at that quality over quantity, in my opinion. <laughs> Bruno, you're supposed to meow. I know, but there's like, he has to bark at the thing to let no Toby know to scare him off. I didn't cover my computer, but it didn't spray my computer, but I need to do that before I spray over on the side again. Thank you, Big Box Props. I appreciate it. Sweater starting to bother me. <sighs> Thank you, Big Bob's props. I appreciate the congratulations. And it's not weird, Tess. I know. I, I have a great community here. I really appreciate all you guys. Being as cool as you are. Oh, wait, let me do some contact cement on the center so then it'll really just hold everything in place. Contact cement, rubber cement. Whatever, it's interchangeable. They work the same way. They're just different colors. I would have thought that the rubber cement would be um, the more yellow of the two and that contact cement would be the clear of the two. But it's the opposite, that the contact cement is yellowish in color and the rubber cement is clear in color. Well, not clear, it's milky, but I, I would have thought the synthetic would have been the clear one. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Dan does jug. You guys are weird too. I get it. Makers, honestly, makers gonna make. People who have that crafty just want to make things are going to make things. <laughs> Supplies, things, having the ability and knowledge. That's not gonna stop me. No, that's how you get it is you just have to do it. Hmm. All right, I think I got a decent amount smooshed on here. Let it dry just a second.
what did my friend say the other day? Maybe you should get a professional to do that. And I looked at my friend, I was like, you know, I'm the professional they hire <laughs> to do that. What was the thing we were working on? And I was laughing about it. What was it? Jeez. something to do with coloring but okay smoosh and smoosh and smoosh and smoosh and smoosh okay Dan, this junk, how much does that smell compared to contact cement? At first, I didn't think it was that stinky in comparison, but then it still smells like just about the same. It has the same amount of um, aromatics. All right. Let me just trim off the edges. I need... Not those scissors, not those scissors, not those scissors, not... Those scissors. I know so many scissors, but not a pair to cut. I think my scissors I want to use are over here. Nope. Jeez, where did I hide them for myself? I swear, I sit right here in this other thing. Apple case scissors, except for I don't want to even remotely pretend to ruin those. I'll take this off so I can see what's being said. Ah. Weird adds character. Yes, it does. In all reality, people who are too normal scare me anyway. They're very weird, in my opinion. Um, big box prop. The only time I used rubber cement was to fix a bike puncture. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. do it at a more comfortable angle. I don't want to cut the under fabric, only the top fabric as smoothly as I can. And I don't have it really glued very well to the folded over velvet, which is fine because I can go in there later. I like that dandest jumps. I have plenty of potential content, just not the focus. In all reality, it takes a team of people. I know Odin produces his videos all by himself, but I work for several YouTube channels and it takes a team of people. I think when I left Smosh, there were at least 20 of us on crew. Like, yeah, because we started out really small and then you realize how many people it takes the village to make a YouTube channel. And although you can really, you know, give here, take there, 
and you can do it independently. You are sacrificing things when you do that. And so there's all these great ideas, but without the <laughs> external support, it can get a little overwhelming and daunting in my opinion. Cut on the other side. Oh, wow. That's a lot. <laughs> Big Bob Strauss. I'm halfway through my Iron Man MK1 suit and a, a heavy weapon Mandalorian and a Tuscan Raider. I read a Tuscan Raider. Twice. No, a few times. A few times. Um, one of the guys that was a Tuscan Raider, he was at this. Star Wars event I went with Odin to over at the Crest Theater. And instead of actually watching the movie, we ended up just hanging out and talking with all the um, other people at the booths. And I got to meet Tuscan Raider and not an Ewok. Anyways, just an interesting, huh. That's cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how many projects I have in um, progress. I have right here alone a few projects <laughs> that I can just see I'm not working on. Um, I made this dress form. I know I still have to do the video for it, but I have a laser cutter and I have the pattern that I use to make this. So I want to scan my pattern into Lightburn. Oh, I need to digitize it and then I need to put it into Lightburn so that I can scale it to 50% and cut it out with my laser cutter and cut and make um, half scale dress forms. What do you need a half scale dress form for? Well, if you want to figure out all your patterning and you don't want to waste your fabric time or material, Doing it at half scale and then printing it at full scale is an amazing way to do that. And since I have dress form that is my exact measurements that works for me, I have two of them. Now I want them tiny. And also um, I had originally wanted to make them for Christmas presents for the ladies at the dress shop because I thought that would be a fun Christmas present, giving everybody a half scale dress form to play with. And if I could figure it out on my laser cutter, then it would be a significantly easier project. If I have to cut it out by hand, I forget it. I'm making one. Okay, so look at this collar. It's nice and crisp and sharp. Can I see this? It's going to go. <sighs> I know it's, I have to pin it, but see how sharp this is. And then this is the piece I lined in buckram. It's a lot fluffier in comparison. So, see that? Isn't that pretty? So, yeah. Now let's repeat that <laughs> again, 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 again. All right, let me do this one first. Oh, there it is. All right, I have to make sure that this side is down because you can't see the um, black marks through the yellow fabric and I don't want to have that. That's, a, that's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Dan does jump. When I look at my Gundam cosplay, I wonder where my mind was and how, how I got it there to even such a build. The zone can be so subconscious. Agreed, 100% agree. When I get a hyper focus, I can get things done. But if I'm stuck on something, it might take me forever to get back to a project. <laughs> Looks like French fries. Big Bob's props says time to order McDonald's. Yes, those are definitely my French fries. When I coached, we had mats that were like about this big that were French fry shaped. And I liked the French fry mats. That's what this is giving me vibes of because they were about this size. <laughs> but only one of them was yellow. Spray glue and contact cement. Cover my computer. Cover my computer. Cover my computer. I really like those clear bags that you get um, bedding in and other such things. I used to just throw them away and never think twice about it. But Paula used them in the... Um, Paula was my coworker at Smosh and we, she would help me organize everything at because she was hair and makeup and I was wardrobe and we shared space and she organized everything in those things and clear bags. Oh my gosh, make a difference. They really do. And so now I save those. And they really come in handy. So it's gonna be contact cemented. So. Shake this. Yep, I think this is why Spooky left. I definitely can smell the things now. <laughs> they weren't so intense when I first started, but. Yes, I'm in a very well ventilated room. I am. That's why I don't think I noticed the smell at first. Otherwise, this might turn into quite a different live stream. One of those live stream fails. Anyways. If I can get these collars built, and I want to make a belt for the blue one um, that's yellow. Yeah, definitely a yellow belt. But I feel like I could put that out of the scraps. And I have the tie still to do.
All right. Looks better when I'm on a flat surface and not all these extra bumps. So I'll scoot that out of the way. Um, let this dry for just a second. Let it dry for a second. Hmm. All right, this side looks ready. No wrinkles. Let's smooth it. Okay, this side is smooth. Just do the edges. making progress and not talking just um okay, can do this side and then I'll do the other side.
let me clip these scissors because I am totally dunking these up. Dan does jump. I'm trying to find out what kind of rug to use for the sitting room in my video game house. Ooh, those are fun problems. I feel like this whole life is always going to be full of problems. I'm just trying to upgrade my problems. I'd rather have the problems like, oh no, what color should I pick out for this? You know, those are my favorite kind of problems. <laughs> Big Bob's props. A fluffy one. Well, do you really want a fluffy one or do you want one that's easy to clean just in case you spill? You know? But you want it to be funky. Keep these clean, they will stay sharp. Okay. Oh, it folds over so nicely. There's a bear skin one that's quite huge. I have to go out and kill some bears, though. Huh. Interesting. Maybe a teddy bear? Go for that faux fur. You smoosh it, and you smoosh it, and you smoosh it. Mm-hmm. Trim the corners. reality unless you live in like the frozen like a cold climate fur is like in hot weather fur is going to rot and be terrible to keep clean like it'll last for a while but it's not going to last that long term and then trying to clean a giant fur like I'm just imagining fur coats like we stored and had those at the costume shop and just um heat is its enemy yeah, and then it's a rug, so you're going to be stepping on it and stomping on it and making messes on it. So <laughs> real fur just doesn't make as much sense to me for a rug unless you are in a cold climate. Sheepskin, however, I really do like sheepskin rugs. Those are really fluffy and woolly. And I'm also not opposed to a faux. But then Nico might get lost if you got a sheepskin rug. Try for just a second. Yeah. 
It really does have to dry, otherwise it doesn't stick right. <laughs> Big bucks brought. Not a 70 kilogram Newfoundland dog. Dan, this town a friend of mine has an Antolian Shepherd, by far the biggest dog I've seen in person. <sighs> you guys are making Toby seem small. Like, I tell him he's scary all the time, that people don't necessarily, like, calm down, Toby, you look scary. <laughs> That's why I always put him in sweaters. Because to, to me, I know he's a sweetheart, but not everybody knows that my dog is a sweetheart. But, yeah. My first dog I had was a, ger not a German Shepherd, I think it was a Belgian Shepherd, because he was bigger than a German Shepherd. Like, he was super floofy, like, he was big and floofy, and he was larger than normal dogs. Yeah, he was my best friend. I love that dog. Yeah. All right, that looks dry enough that I can. Got this. Your wife's a smart lady, Dan does junk. Dan says, my wife doesn't like big dogs. She says, big dogs equal big poops. Uh, I can't argue with that logic. I really can't. Toby is very well trained. <laughs> when we first got him, he decided this one red ball was his poop ball, and he would sit on the ball to poop. I don't know. And it was weird, because every once in a while, he'd come out, and there'd be just a, like, ball would have a poop on it. I'm like, how do you balance that? It makes no sense, but he had definitely his favorite spot. And then when my brother had him for a little while, he would poop on his spigot, like where he would turn the water on and off. I thought that one was funny. I was like, you're a weird dog. I love you. Huh. <sighs> <laughs> I don't mind there being wrinkles on the back like I'm not trying to make wrinkles but I want them to be not at the fold so you cannot tell that they're there from the front because smoothness smoosh 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 Big Bob's props, big food and big and big food bills. Yes, that makes sense. But they're also big company. And I did not pick out Toby. He was a present and I absolutely love him. He came into my life and it just, you know what? We happy, we good. And then he adopted Bruno. Like he met Bruno and brought him into our family. So, and once you have a Toby, a Bruno is not much more. All right. Oh, it looks good. This makes me happy. It's nice, it's big, it's ridiculous. This is gonna be great. Oh, big Bob's props. Grizzly was a rescue. What kind of dog is Grizzly? Sounds like a little bear. <laughs> hmm. Divisions here. Hello, Schultz Division. All right, let me spray this.
for the top piece, I was really focusing on the edges, knowing that they're going to get folded over. But on this piece, I'm really focusing on the center because that's where it really has to stick. has the rest of the week off for Easter holiday. Is that all ready? Oh, I'm not ready. Definitely not ready. I wanted to make Easter baskets this year on the project list of, hmm, I want to try that. Big Bob's props of Brown Newfoundland. I'll have to look up that, but it's yes, a walking rug. Oh, I love puppy dogs so much. I was gonna get a little bit of the contacts in my dog velvet. <laughs> Yeah, does Jungle be stopping around in my Gundam this Saturday? Yeah, Dark Anime and Rose Ghost happening. That's awesome. Uh, big box props. Sorry, gotta go. Food's here. That's important. Go eat. Catch you on the replay. <laughs> Show Steven, we actually forgot about the baskets for the kids. Gotta get something for them tomorrow then. <laughs> Right? I don't know. I gotta get. I like making um, wreaths out of hedge trimmings, taking the um, big sticks and like bending them into head wreaths. Um, one year for my birthday, I made a whole bunch of them and added flowers um, for all my friends. And I thought it might be fun to try actually making a basket out of yarn clippings. <laughs> Who knows? I might end up doing that. I might not. I've also seen some crochet baskets that I really like. And I know crochet, once I kind of get the pattern, goes together really quickly. Yeah. Mm. Gotta buy eggs too. I need more eggs. Because decorating eggs is one of my favorite parts. Okay, let this dry for a second. Schultz Division decorating eggs we usually do together. 
Yeah, Make, decorating eggs reminds me of my friend Natalie. She is one of the most crafty, creative persons I have ever met. And her family used to do a um, Easter egg competition. So they'd all sit down and be given an egg and they'd have to sit there and do it. And whoever had the coolest egg when they were done was the winner. She made a little Jeep, <laughs> little Jeep Wrangler with tires and everything as her egg. It was the most impressive thing I've ever seen like I was just like dang I wouldn't have even and so now I'm like I want to do something cool like her her jeep egg <laughs> hmm. where's my center my center is Okay, and then you smoosh and smoosh and smoosh. That is, oh, that's the contact cement. But no, what is that mark? Contact cement, luckily it's on the bottom. And it when it dries, the wet spot will go away. Smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. Yeah. Okay. Schultz Division Easter is still pretty huge in Denmark. Say Easter's not huge here, but it doesn't feel like one of the more stressful holidays. I like the food. I'm a big fan of ham. Smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. Schultz Division said, I said that because we remove our holidays for all yours. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, this Jim. I like Jim Gap. Gap. Easter joke. I can put your names. Anybody's name. It's Easter celebrating Jesus' resurrection. What are we going to do? How about eggs and a bunny? <laughs> I know, this is definitely an odd holiday in traditions. Why? I don't know, but jelly beans, right? I'm not a huge fan of jelly beans. My mom would steal all the black ones because those are her favorite. And I was very okay with that because yuck, speed. No, as an adult, I can appreciate, but still, I don't feel I missed out. We have Halloween, which is around the same as our Bastelvin, but kids like Halloween better, which isn't our tradition. 
the end of the junk. Halloween is cosplay with candy. Again, Halloween makes no sense either as a holiday, but it is just fun. Like, let's play dress up and eat candy. I'm totally down for all of that. Knock on strangers' doors. Candy! Give me it, please, and thank you. Yeah. It's National Dress Up Holiday. National Dress Up Day. We ran out of candy last year. We gave out little stickers and the kids actually love them. Oh yeah, I could totally see that. Sometimes those non-edible gifts are the best. Sometimes they're not, <laughs> but who doesn't like stickers? We also adopted Valentine's Day, which has no place within our traditions. Makes sense too. Valentine's Day is totally made up holiday too. As a kid, I absolutely loved Valentine's Day because I liked making Valentine's and eating all the sugar and candy in school. Now, as an adult, my tradition is to just make strawberry, well, make heart-shaped pancakes with strawberries on top. It's just my favorite breakfast for Valentine's Day. And then just a little bit of chocolate or Nutella to go with it. Depends if I pre-thought about it or not. And I still like to get my coworkers Valentine's. because <laughs> the 45th planet because Easter is based on older pagan string spring festivities so eggs are rebirth and bunnies for reproduction and that makes complete sense I've always wanted to play with a maypole. Like the thing with the ribbons and the twirling. They make no sense to me, but they look like fun. Wash my table. And the spray glue came all off easily from yesterday. But now I have two giant collars. And there's a curve to this. Like it curves one way better than it curves the other way. So this one was a lower one. This one I wanted the collar to be above the shoulder, and this one I wanted the collar to be below the shoulder. So it would be right here and kind of away from the body, like a tube. And now, so it's curves this way. Yes, curves this way. There's definitely an inside curve because it doesn't curve this way as smoothly. It gets bumpy. Yeah, it pulls all funny here. But when I do it this way, it's all smooth because when I was sewing it, I was sewing it on the curve to make sure that it kept the curve in the right position. All right. So then this has to get here. Um, 
<laughs> um, Dan does jump my in-laws side and woo men and sometimes they hold what are called Thepmian, which are meant to bring good luck, fortune for select family members and they're held at random times. But they're pretty much random gatherings with free food. You know what? Celebrations are celebrations and I will take all the good. Um, Dan has drunk so awesome seeing this dress come to life. I still remember the sketch you showed. I know it looks a little worse before it gets better, but it's starting to get into the I can show it phase. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's like, you know, progress pics? No. Not yet. It's still in this phase or that phase. Okay. This is what I need to get pinned to. Chilt division, my girlfriend often sees RuPaul's Drag Race, and when they put dresses together, it's totally insane how fast they do it and how good they look, look whether it's sewing or hot glue. Yes, I agree. I have made several drag outfits working at a costume shop. I make lots of outfits that got rented by drag queens, and I absolutely, like, it was so satisfying. It's like, yay, they like my work. Like... It's insane. I love I love drag queens because you know as long as it looks good, that's the whole point. What it, it's held together by faith and prayers, but it looks good. <sighs> Spelling is bad today. Red wine is working. Don't worry, I can't spell even if my life is depended on it. I've decided I'm just too creative to like spell like normal people. <sighs> I'm really just gonna, it's gonna be easier to just stitch this with a needle and thread than if I try and pin it and then stitch it. I might as well just stitch it. Oh jeez. No, I don't think I'm gonna try and untangle that. It's not gonna happen. Let me just go get the other thread. It's right here. Or is it in here? It's in here. Yeah, it's often meant to be seen from either a distance or in pics, which what I try to keep in mind when with my Gundam suit. Oh, yes, for camera. Making costumes for camera is completely different than making costumes for stage. And even making costumes for stage is different than making costumes for um So costumes for film, you can use clamps and you can hide um, your indiscretions easily. Gaff tape is your best friend. Um, making costumes for theater. I was told a good costumer never uses safety pins, but honestly, from a costume rifle shop, safety pins are great because it's like temporary sewing and easier. Uh, so I just kind of accepted. I'm a terrible costumer because I absolutely love working with safety pins. <laughs> and because um, theater, it's on and off and it's like for a run of a show. So it needs to be workable, but the insides don't necessarily have to look that great. But it depends on which theater you work for because my friend who is the head seamstress at um, this one theater company, I'm not going to call her out. <laughs> she makes sure that all of her garments are finished on the inside and gorgeous. And then there's like fashion shows where I, I was watching this gorgeous couture fashion show. And we went through the making of the garments and the, the head seamstress like kind of taking you through the process of these garments being made. And then at the end... Like when they're on the runway, 
she has a roll of gaff tape on her arm like this. And I, I knew exactly why she had it there and its purpose. It is like, this is the hopes and prayers. If it's not done, it, it's the tape. It's the black gaff tape, but this one's blue painter's tape. I had a brown gaff tape over here, but, but yeah, even couture gowns. But the thing is, once they're made and then they're thing, they'll be made custom for the people. So I understand it's a fashion show, but it made me laugh because I'm like, game recognizes game. <laughs> My chair is squeaky. Hmm. Um. Interesting. I've been working on a routine with it for costume contests at cons. Going to have to practice a lot, getting used to moving about with them big old feet. Yes. Yes. You have giant feet on your Gundam costume. When I put on Joe's Gundam costume, I was like, oh damn, we have to do break dancing in this. And he just looked at me like I was a crazy head. I'm like, but it looks. All right, double checking. This is the curve. Yes. This is the way it sews nicely. So this is the outside. This goes up to here. Line this up. I'm gonna do two stitches to lock my stitches in place. Okay, three. So I feel more secure. Shields Division says, we are a full-on creative mind in my household. I'm a graphic designer. My girlfriend is a hairdresser. She also cares about color and shapes, and we have a lot to talk about design uses and so on. That's lovely. I love it. I appreciate creative people because I am surrounded by a lot of, I wouldn't say uncreative people, but people who don't necessarily think like me and... I like I try and explain like my vision to some people sometimes and I must and they look at me and go I've seen you your finished thing I I'm not picturing it but I trust you <laughs> so it's like I work with people who don't necessarily get the creative thing and I'm constantly surrounded by them but and they also think I think we'd rather creative yeah my nibblings are really creative, that's for sure. Dan Dishunk, mine has more limited movement compared to Joe's, especially in the arms. Interesting. Yeah, because I could move his arms and the hips and the knees. It was more like I was on a platform base. The biggest thing in Joe's that was the hindrance to my movement that threw me off was the little chin piece because the way his Gundam was that I would have to go like this to move my head around because there was, it would get caught on whatever was going on in this area. You know, the maker's going to make creators who want to create. Ah, I'm tangled. You know why I'm tangled? Because I didn't wax my thread. That's what I didn't do. I want to pretend waxing the thread isn't that big of a deal. 
but when you're hand stitching, it really makes it so much easier. I found my, my portable thread heaven and um, I think I left it where I was hand stitching on the couch. That couch may be a little dangerous. my thread on the sewing machine. I have a little thread waxer right here on my sewing machine. Okay. Hi, stitching. I am definitely liking how crisp this is in comparison to the last one. The last one what? This one I had sewn in place. See how much more lumpy it is in comparison, just in general. And look how smooth and cartoon-like this is. This was more the look I was trying to go for. Yeah. Uh, trying to get both thread fabrics. Ah. Division. I have educated myself with Danish furniture designs and I'm so controlled by it in my choices. Interesting. It's almost been over an hour and a half. I think I can get this done in 30 minutes. That's my plan. Yesterday I was just hand stitching on the couch while I was watching TV. Instead of playing video games, I don't normally play video games, but I've gotten into one lately. Valheim, Valheim. I don't know. Reminds me of if Legend of Zelda and Roblox had a baby. world. If your thread starts to twist, it'll start to knot. And if it starts to get all tangly, just let it hang out and then it will, um, it will just twirl all the extra um, twists out of it. So you just let it drop and then pick it back up. After it's done spinning. Ah. I really like the cardboard, but I hate sewing it. <laughs> this 
this side is the flat side. When I start doing the other side, it's going to get all weird and wonkier to try and sew. Oh, well. stitching now this is what I call riveting entertainment I think of me, these are just gonna like start falling together soon if I really wanted to I probably could finish these today if I just hyperfixated and didn't live stream while I did it um, I'm not going to go live tomorrow. Um, it's just not going to work for me. But I do have to finish this this week, so I probably will go live on Thursday morning just to give you guys a head up. Heads up. Lovely. My computer came unplugged. Let me plug that in real quick. I hate sewing where it's one stitch at a time, but it is just much better on this to do it. Ah! If I put this on the dress form and then stitched it, it may be easier to sew, but I'm short. remember what I was watching while I was looking on this. Oh, I lied. I was watching The Karate Kid. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in forever, but it was on TV. So my brain is still trying to figure out how to make this skirt work. I'm wondering if I do my pattern differently than my interfacing because I am um, the, the interfacing. I could only get a certain size um, circle cut out of it. It was like there was a max length of what I could or couldn't get, but the fabric's much wider and 
I could cut it out like a full circle at the top and then more. This is making no sense. I will pull over the skirt in just a second. Let me sew this side up and then I will show you what I'm kind of talking about because my brain's still chewing on how I want to cut out the fabric that I can maximize the most fabric because I wanted to mostly pink with maybe a yellow underlining if I need to stretch out the fabric a little more. I like how easily this needle stabs through um, the cardboard. All right, and two stitches to lock it in place. One. going to be like this. With it, of course, close from the top, but working on it. <laughs> that's a bunch of hand stitching, but that's nice and boring for a live stream. I can do that on my own time. But that is how I'm planning on attaching it and how it already is kind of attached here. And then I will add a, a tie for this. this was, so. That's going to be a three-dimensional mess to act it, to sew. I'm just going to put that there so instead of fighting it in front of you guys. Um, Bernie Davis, good morning, Felicia. I just got up uh, to stop by and say hello. Well, good morning, Bernie Davis. Um, Schultz Division, we'll have to go. Have a good day, y'all. Well, thank you for joining here, us here, Schultz Division. Um, yeah, big box props. I'm back. What did I miss? I finished both of these yellow collars and I'm starting to attach them by hand. I got one section attached. That's it. Working on more, but. I might do that just on my own time because hand stitching on stream is kind of boring in my opinion. You guys can tell me otherwise. Um, don't worry, I'm just live. None of hit that hit my computer. It did get my oh, Lordy. Just go 
going to go put this in the sunshine. I thought I was being smart using a lovely cup with a lid. So I wasn't being as careful. Don't worry. I'm only live making a big old mess. Good thing is it's just water. That will take a while to get fabric on. Yes and no, it's kind of a big piece. Let me just manage my craziness at the moment. Yeah, good thing it's just water and not anything sweet or milky, creamy coffee or anything like that. water all over my table. I don't want to put my stuff on it because I don't want to get it all wet. But let's talk about the problem that I'm trying to figure out. So I want a full circle skirt. The skirt isn't a full 100% circle because it's a cone. But my cone, I've created the shape. Let me pull out my um, pattern I made. This is not the interlining, this is a pattern. In order to get my cone the shape that I wanted it to be, I made a pattern that's a circle with a wedge cut out. And with this wedge cut out, it made me the volcano shape that I needed. And then I got in my head that I wanted it to be a swirl skirt. So I attached three of these swirls, three of these circles with the wedges cut out, three of these circles together, and they will lay flat into a circle, but when they're all on, they kind of, they curve up into the cone. So originally I was just going to cut three of these out of the fabric, but I can fill in this wedge and cut a whole circle and this part will go onto the layer below it. And so if I cut out another full circle, that layer will go onto the layer below it. But the thing is, is because it is this wedge shape, the circle with this wedge cut out, it's not a symmetrical circle. How is a circle not symmetrical? It's a spiral. There's, it, there's an oval to it. So if you flip it over, it's going to be the wrong shape. So you have to make sure you know which side's your right side and which side's your wrong side. And then I'm messing with it because where it can get cut flat and then it goes on to the next piece. Now, this next piece is still the shape, but it has this much already covered in it. And so it's going to come over even more on the other one. So I feel like that'll help me stretch out my fabric, but I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's going to help me. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out if I can, um, if it'll help me get enough fabric saved and if I can get that shape. It's, it's one of those things that I don't know until I actually have it cut out and I don't want to cut my fabric out right away 
because I don't have room for it to make this mistake. And that's where I'm kind of at because I have, if I had twice the fabric I have now, I would be fine. I would just cut it out and go for it and just make a few mistakes and then fix it as I go. But because I'm, you know what? Maybe I'll use a, a crappy fabric and do a, um, a mock-up because I do have some plastic that I could have something that I could work with to make a mock-up. Yeah, that might be able to help. Uh, yeah, so that's what my brain is thinking on on that skirt. And the other skirt, we really didn't have a big, big discussion about it. It's kind of a I think it's more going to be of a pencil skirt versus a um, circle skirt because it has a bigger shoulder top on the blue one. So I'm leaning towards a pencil skirt, but also because it's such an extreme shape, I kind of wanted to do an exaggerated hip, probably a triangular hip, but I haven't really 100% fallen in love with that idea because I like the idea of having like a little bit of a peplum or ruffled edge, although I could just tuck it in, into the belt. These are problems that I'm still kind of thinking on on this project, but um, but yeah, so I'm going to stitch on these collars, both onto the pink one and the blue one, and I'm not going to be live tomorrow, but I will be live on Thursday. I'm going to check for Thursday morning. Um, yeah. But I think I, I'm at a good stopping point because I just made a big old mess. I cleaned it up more or less, but yeah, I think I just need to get in and hand sew those collars on and kind of be done with it, with the collars. And then I'll have, and then I have to do the closures. Um, I have to go dig out my hooks and eyes and snaps. Although I have been contemplating just throwing a zipper in there for ease. I know zipper is the easy option. <laughs> I know zippers seem like they could be crazy, but. Yeah, I have to get my closures, the collars hand stitched. I gotta finish this edge. Yeah, so there's still plenty to do and it's gonna get a little worse before it gets better, but it's starting to, it's starting to be something you guys can see. Um, I've been at this for two hours. I think I'm just gonna call it a, call it here. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate you guys being here and yeah, that was not a good cup for this, for working on projects. Anyways, thank you, thank you. I'm just rambling on. I will see you guys on Thursday, hopefully. Bye.